Welcome to Night Shadows. I'm Stuart Best. Where the paranormal is normal. Where that which you thought you knew, you didn't. And where the future can be known, if you know exactly where to look. Well, good evening, everyone. Thanks for tuning in and listening. Uh, we're going to focus in on the, uh, and we got Larry, obviously, on board. And uh, we're going to focus in, I think, to start, anyway, on what's going on over there in, in North Korea. This is getting, as I understand it, very hot. And the headlines on Drudge would tend to indicate that we're, we're headed for massive trouble over there. Hi, Larry. How you doing tonight? Hello, Stuart. Thanks for having me. On the headlines from uh, Drudge, Kim readies for war. Senators told very grave Hawaii threat now. Uh, what's this about? I mean, we know he's well, readying for war, and he's kind of like a you know, he's like a wild animal, and, and we're not giving him, it doesn't seem like, any way out of this. You usually leave a door open so that a person can kind of save face, but it doesn't seem like we're leaving Kim any door, which indicates to me they they really are intent on uh, killing him and getting getting out, getting him all done. What's your take? Well, I think uh, the Trump administration's a, a different kind of ball game, and uh, in, instead of the, what we've been used to for so long, this leading from behind baloney, uh, mm-hmm. you know, where we've got someone that actually preempts. And so when you have someone like Kim that preempts, and you have someone like Donald Trump that is a preemptor also, apparently, uh, yeah, there's going to be a clash. And, and what's interesting is... Uh, They were talking today on Fox News, especially in Fox Business, about how unprecedented this was for the White House to actually have all the senators come to the White House for a uh, classified briefing on North Korea and the grave situation involving that. Now, what's interesting, too, is we know that uh, there appears to be another new test prepared and also uh, more missile tests are supposed to be, uh, you know, going off in a few days, uh, according to Kim. Now, also, uh, Kim has begun to fire his artillery off the coast. And at the same time, we also had a nuclear submarine uh, surface uh, off South Korea. We've got the uh, Carl Vincent uh, task force, including Japanese warships. Uh, And those being followed uh, reportedly by a Chinese ship and a Russian ship, uh, you know, coming into the uh, China Sea there, this is very serious. And they're very concerned. Uh, You know, Kim could literally devastate South Korea within hours. I mean, literally within hours, probably within minutes, but hours especially. And uh, they're very concerned. Well... Are they ready for this? Are they going to start to evacuate? Uh, It would seem to me that if this is what they think he could do, unless they got something up their sleeve that we don't even know anything about, like a TR-3B attack or something like that, or something that's cloaked that we don't even know about, so that they could neutralize him without him even having... He, they say he's got about six minutes, that it would take him about six minutes to to uh, really start the barrage, which would mean if they, they only have six minutes to stop it. Yeah, that's very true, Stuart. But, uh, there are reports, there are reports that plans are in place for evacuating 100 and I believe 30,000 or more uh, Americans from South Korea also planned are in place for the Japanese to begin to evacuate uh, persons from South Korea and and move people in that uh, peninsula. 
However, at the same time, the, Japan only has, according to the reports, 10 minutes from the time Kim fires a missile. Japan has only 10 minutes before the strike. So this is becoming extremely serious. Now, my understanding is the THAAD missile systems are in South Korea and within a day or two are being operational which will give an incredible radar system and uh, the ability to bring down Kim's missiles. Now, we do know that uh, any of this, if it begins, probably is going to go to war. It's, uh, you know, if we have a clash, it's it's not going to end well. But uh, are we ready? Well, you got to admit, for the first time ever, the White House has called the entire Senate to the White House for a briefing on North Korea. Yeah, that sounds very ominous. Now, did, has anybody actually said, other than very grave, what they were told? Is, are there any leaks coming out as to what this meeting actually, this briefing actually told them? Well, they haven't. They and probably for the reason, for that reason, the only uh, admission from any of the Congress people that came out was that it was all classified information and. Uh, Stuart, I suppose, unless you want to go to prison, you probably won't talk about it a lot. Yeah. Well, they didn't look very happy coming out of there, I guess, from, from Pro- what people said. Probably wasn't said. good news. Probably wasn't good news. All right, now here, yeah, I, I would say, well, maybe they've been told that we are going to take uh, try to take him out. But I think we're heading into a trap. I haven't changed my mind. I think this is a trap. And I'm not exactly sure exactly how that all is going to work. It just seems now China has been kind of playing along with this, turning back their, uh, you know, uh, sanctions and stuff like that and getting, <clears throat> becoming a little more nasty towards Kim. Now, it would seem to me that China, more than anyone else, would benefit from the removal of Kim uh, as a North Korean leader, I would not expect that his military uh, really appreciate him at all and would maybe just, if if he fell, they would probably offer instant peace to the Chinese. So is this a plan? Has, Has Trump maybe made a deal with China? You do what we want and you get the entire Korean peninsula. Well, what's what's interesting, Stuart, in that is the fact that you remember Kim's half-brother that was assassinated in, I think it was Singapore or Malaysia, I can't remember which exactly. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was recently mm-hmm. assassinated by North Korean operatives, and uh, there were some rumors in the background that China had worked at grooming him to replace Kim, in North Korea, so uh, Kim cut that one off. Uh, what's interesting, and let me read this to you. This is really interesting from Tom Horn's group, Skywatch TV. Yes. It says, Mystic yes. Rabbi foretold North Korea's nuclear role in the end of days 22 years ago, said Rabbi Levi Natamani in uh, a speech in 1994, one month before he died, warned that North Korea posed a great danger to the world and was a nuclear key to Gog Magog. So we could maybe say that this uh, North Korean situation is the first domino or the trigger event to usher in the whole series, possibly like uh, Isaiah 17, Daniel 8, Ezekiel 38, 39. Was that kind of what you would gather out of that, maybe? Well, from what uh, what little I shared, and people can go to skywatchtv.com and read the whole article. You've read it, I think, Stuart. But from what you, <laughs> yep. you appear to glean from that, it sounds accurate that maybe this is. Maybe North Korea literally is the first domino. Well, I did. There was a prophecy, and I don't know who gave it, because we get tons of prophecies. So you kind of just read them and put them in the back of your mind, and if it happens, you can say, oh, okay. 
Uh, most of them don't happen. But that would make more sense to me that uh, there was a guy that said World War Three would not start where everybody thought it would. And maybe that's what he was referring to. Is an attack, uh, Kim loses it. I mean, when you corner an animal, uh, what happens? They attack. <clears throat> They're going to come out. So the options they have on 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 this fellow, this Kim, is yeah, they either have to take him out totally, very rapidly within a couple of minutes, or we are in for a huge, huge war. Am I thinking wrong? Do you think, or what? No, that uh, that makes perfect sense. I, you know, I'm like you, and others are concerned about the satellites North Korea has. Now, whether those satellites contain a couple of petrified mice by now, or maybe a low yield nuke, we don't know. But uh, there was also the report recently of the North Korean sub off the west coast. And matter of fact, Stuart, we actually fired. An ICBM last night off the California coast as a signal to North Korea and China of the seriousness of this situation. So, uh, and and you also, you know, are aware of the information that the B-52s are moving uh, to that region of the world right now. So there are strategic forces in movement. So perhaps we're watching the uh, what we have talked about before, the Armageddon threat. Here's another headline, though, from Drudge. Hawaii threat now. How do you assess that? Does that mean they think Kim already has a missile that can reach Hawaii? Oh, they already know. That's what uh, I that, uh, Yeah, you're talking about a regional missile there. It don't have to be, you know. And, uh, and also, uh, there's been the reports for some time that uh, the capability of firing, and you remember this was Russian uh, equipment, that you could fire missiles from cargo ships. All they'd got to have to do would be to get a cargo ship with a missile, and, you know, like a Scud or anything, actually, and fire it. Uh, and you got to remember, Kim has chemical and biological warfare, uh, and, and some of the stuff uh-huh. that Syria used, actually, they believe some of that possibly from North Korea. So, you know, he could do a incredible damage on Hawaii uh, just regionally. So he could also take out Seoul, easy. So we would oh, lose, yeah. I don't know how many millions of people live there, but it's quite a few. And, of course, we've got our American troops. So this evacuation, would this be kind of taking a vacation from Seoul for a couple weeks <laughs> to see what happens? Well, <laughs> well, the the plans the plans, Stuart, appear to be those that are given the order to evacuate move to the coast. They move away from Seoul and the 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 local area. That because Seoul is only like maybe what twenty something thirty miles. Uh, it's so yes. close, it'll get hit real quick. And uh, the, the the plans appear to be that the people that are told to evacuate quietly move to all the coastal areas and ships come in to retrieve them from the coast. Now, we also got to bring in Major Ed Dames, Dr. Doom, because he was the one who first said, and as far as I know, never backed off it, that uh, North Korea was, in fact, going to be the, the nation that would detonate a nuclear weapon in anger. So well, we have did. that as remote viewers. Yeah, uh, not only that original statement and remote viewing, uh, recently Ed Dames did an emergency uh, post and said that he was working with three-letter agencies presently, actually uh, working on North Korea, so I would assume they're gleaning uh, probably new remote viewing data from Ed Dames and his people on the North Korean situation, maybe even trying to locate underground facilities. Yeah, that would almost have to, I, I think North Korea is pretty well fortified. Even a Delta Force probably would have trouble uh, penetrating that and getting in there. Uh, you'd almost have to have people on the inside and pay them 
big handsome uh, ransom to uh, for them to stop it. But according to what I read in, in the deep, uh, you know what he what he was talking about, Doctor Doom. Um, this is a nuke that actually does go off from from what the first vision was that he had, and that it was a forerunner of a CME, uh, that kill shot CME stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah, that that's what uh, the original that I read from Ed Dames was that this original nuke was snuck under the border region, under the demilitarized zone right there where the militaries are, and exploded underground just below for, uh, forces in that region, and that was done in anger. And that was one of the things Ed Dame stated was it was a, it was a nuke that was exploded in anger, and this was a forerunner. This is one of the signs, including a shuttle deal, uh, talking about the beginnings of the series. The kill shot's not just one shot. It's a series of solar flares that are occurred. Wow. So here we sit, and uh, we got another few days here before we run into May Day. So I suppose maybe May Day might be uh, a deal. I don't know. That not much has really happened during this whole period. And uh, although we have had a few little stray, uh, how do I say, events, such as the threat that Obama made to Trump. Do you remember that? Yes. Exactly. What did he say exactly? Do you remember? I cannot. It was some- I cannot recall the exactness, but ironically, Obama, who's been missing from the the scene recently, is now coming back out into the forefront. So, and we're at the same time, Stuart, as this is all building, we're also seeing the deep state. Who actually in progress? I mean, this you know, including the Democrats and the Republican establishment, they're in a coup against Trump, and you can plainly see it in progress. Yeah, well, they're in a coup against even well, and culture. There's another uh, talking point. Uh, the, the communists actually won on that. She canceled her uh, speech at Berkeley. Yeah, go ahead. I was just going to add that they've said this evening on Lou Dobbs, they identified the the mayor of that town, Berkeley, uh, as being uh, one of the activists on Facebook in doing what's needed to be done to promote the left and uh, the protest. And, of course, the, the police chief also under him, who stood down completely and let protesters run wild um you know i guess you could say they won uh the protesters now rule berkeley i mean they ruled it completely uh the left ruled it completely uh we're seeing a the lines being drawn spirit for a civil war and and that that leads me to a very interesting book called searching for atlantis yeah let's get into that <clears throat> yeah it's uh it's a very interesting book i posted it today on my uh Radio Flash. It's a book called Searching for Atlantis. It was sent to me, and I'll use her pen name, George Ryder McQueen. Uh, that's who's the author of the book. Uh, you can find them at Amazon.com. She's a very prolific writer, been writing since she was nine years old. And what's interesting is uh, this book, it, it goes right up there with, you know, the fortune books. Uh, one second after, Days of Wrath, et cetera, et cetera. This book is incredibly interesting. And this is what's interesting. I shared with you earlier, uh, we talked about the name of it, title Atlantis. There were two clues in mm-hmm. this book, uh, because I'm only not quite halfway into it yet. My wife kept it from me for a little while while she read it. <laughs> but it's it, in the book, here's two clues. Number one clue, uh, it says, uh, and then she hit another side and she gasped. Atlantis, the software linking the Large Hadron Collider with the Atlas Project. And then also, uh, General McNair uh, reported Atlantis as the Secret Service code name for the President's daughter, 
who was missing. So, Stuart, I got to tell people, you got to read this book. You got to read this book. The author is a is a has a, been a uh, continual follower, a fan of the uh, Stuart Best and Larry Taylor Intel reports we've got on Night Shadows. I mean, she is really a fan. She's an author of many books. She's an incredible writer. And Stuart, we got to get her on sometime. We got to talk to her. She's got everything yeah. in this book, including EMPs, ham radio usage, FEMA. Uh, you know, uh, everything we've been talking about seems to be in this book. Uh, we gotta, we got to get her on. She's great. Well, I wonder how much time we actually have left to uh, enjoy the freedoms that we have because uh, Art told us about, you know, the activity of FEMA up here. You You have some activity down there, and it seems like it's all preparation mode for an EMP. Interesting that she includes that at the beginning of the book, an EMP attack. I don't I don't well, think I the American people are, are ready for that at all. Well, I think, Stuart, reading the book would almost scare them to death. You remember the book by William Fortune, One Second After, and where that went immediately. And, and of course, uh, this book ranks right up there with Fortune's books. It's a warning. It's an absolute warning. And uh, from what Art had, had shared with you and what some of the stuff I've gleaned and shared with you, uh, it appears that emergency management and FEMA, et cetera, is in a mode of preparing for an EMP or an emergency where you have no access, no availability anywhere to the normal communications, including radio, television, uh, internet, et cetera. Oh, so people need to be prepared, Stuart. And this this book, if people haven't read it, they need to get it. You can get it from Amazon. Well, it's kind of interesting that all these kind of warnings are coming, and it's like the Lord is telling the American people, "Hey, wake up!" But they, I don't think they're ever going to wake up. And it's just going to be uh, well. It says any nation that forgets God is turned into hell, and of course, we've forgotten the Lord. That's obvious now. And uh, do you see any, how do I word this, do you see any chance of authentic revival? I see plenty of chances for a fake one. <laughs> Spirit, if, if, you know, if, I see no signs in the, the nominal church or, or the, the what we call the church, the secular church out there, of any kind of revival. I mean, they don't even know what the word repentance means anymore. It's not in their vocabulary. They have completely forgot what repentance means. So I guess Second Chronicles, we can kind of forego that one right now. Uh, but I, mm-hmm. I, there's a possibility, though, Stuart, in the remnant and in, in the people in the highways and byways way out there in the alleys that you never would have thought of, there's a possibility the Holy Spirit could move in a time of great trouble and you could have you it wouldn't be revival the way we think of big churches, but it could be a yes. revival of people that were never never imagined that a God cared that much to come and die for them and save them for eternity. Yeah, yeah, I, it's uh, so foreign to the American people at this point. Uh, and a couple more headlines out of Drudge we need to comment on nuclear attack drills held outside of Manhattan. Now, I also read where they were going to have the same thing in Washington. So why would they be doing these kind of nuclear attack drills now? Is this not well, some sort of uh, confirmation, maybe, that they really do expect major war? Well, we do know, Stuart, that uh, there are... Uh, Problems, you know, with threats that we've received, and uh, the Obama administration, he had many of them. But what, ironically, talking again about uh, George Ryder's book, uh, Searching for Atlantis, in the book, it detailed how these drills were opportunities to infiltrate by foreign entities into our American emergency system to prepare for a takeover and an EMP strike. So 
sometimes the drills become live. Yeah. Well, I think that's kind of where we're headed myself. I mean, the Bible is very implicit, uh, implicit about a Babylon America being taken down. And I don't know what role our government plays in that, whether, you know, with this is a threat that Obama made something about if Trump crossed some red lines, he was going to come for him. Uh, personally, I still think, you know, everybody says, well, Obama couldn't possibly be the Antichrist. Well, I'm not saying he is, but he sure has some of the qualifications it's, he's Muslim. He was born uh, over there in Kenya. Uh, they did some research on his background. He uh, he, he can claim uh, family ties with King David and uh, Solomon. So I guess we just kind of wait. But it seemed kind of interesting to me that he's threatening, actually, a sitting president. Because it really was well, kind of a threat. Yeah, yeah, we're we're seeing that. And you you remember some of the studies that Stan Dale did in the book of Daniel and, and talking about also warnings about anyone connected with Solomon. And, so, and you know, he looked yes. at Soleimani, he looked at Solomon of, uh, of Saudi Arabia. But, you know, we, we got to think about something, Stuart. We still don't know the, the exact lineage of uh well i uh, you know i'll say about the person who we still don't know his real name barry satoro maybe uh (laughs) you know obama maybe uh, we don't know who this guy really is and and while he's been in existence and operating we haven't seen matreya that's that's right and I'm I'm very very suspicious. I think somehow I don't know how he may get back into uh, office now. Whether he it takes the name president or whatever, I'm not sure. But uh, J.R. Church did the research on his background, and that's how he came up with uh, number one. He's in Ireland. He's, he has a lot of uh, Irish background, and that's from where the tribe of Dan, Ireland. Uh, actually come through so yeah there's a lot there that might possibly shock the entire world but I guess what I should say to everybody listening if you haven't prepared you better do so we don't have much time and um, this could get out of control very very uh, rapidly China is not Donald Trump's uh, China hates the United States, always has, always will, wants to probably dominate the world. So I, I'm just very suspicious we're walking into something that's going to have unintended consequences. What do you think, Larry? Oh, it's, uh, we're in a very unusual time. And what, we, what we're also viewing, Stuart, and we don't have the answer for people, is we, if there is this pause, or this delay in the, the downfall of Babylon, America, how much time do we have, and is Trump holding back the storm, so to speak? Uh, the window may be, yes. the window of opportunity may be closing, Stuart. Yeah, I think it is. And then we got 5777 uh, year, and that is, uh, you know, I, I'm very suspicious at the age of grace. And that vision of yours that where the door was closing and the insurgents maybe for the rest of this year over here. Anyway, how do they reach you? We got about twenty seconds left. Oh, the quickest way is my blog, Larry W. Taylor dot org O R G. Thank you, Stuart. Okay. Well thanks for coming on. And everybody we will pay attention and go on with a flash update if we have to. Anyway, good night and um uh, Prepare if you haven't, and take care of yourselves. Anyway, we're going to close down, and we'll see you again Friday.